my traumatized babies and mentally ill Barbies. It is not lost on me that I am actually filming this or I have started filming this at 1.11 on December 13th, lucky number 13. Something horrific has happened to me, not in a bad way. Has something horrific ever happened to you in the good way? Have you ever experienced a synchronicity or a series of synchronicities that alerts you to a specific convergence of energies that if they occur will reveal something to you so intensely bizarre but also good that it will just shake you to your core? That is something of what's going on here. Um, you know, I'm very bothered by this. And I'm not going to tell you the exact synchronicity because typically when we start talking about synchronicities that are personal to us, it always sounds insane, trivial, and irrelevant when we start trying to describe like how we got from A to B and the signs that it always sounds silly. It's like personally relevant to us, but like when we try to describe it to another person, it's just like, don't like, don't even bother because it's not for them. It was for you. Um, and it's fine if you want to give some sort of testimony, but usually that testimony is better given after the thing finally converges. Once you have the manifestation in front of you and it's been in front of you for a long time, you typically don't want to talk about your magical process until long after that magical process, that particular one, is completed and over with. Otherwise, you're jacking with stuff. So now, um, the reason why I'm talking about this is because there is a read that has not been posted yet. Uh, and in that read, I get distracted because Dasa is getting into the bookcase that is over here. You cannot see it, there's a bookcase that is over here. And what I thought to myself is, oh, she's going to knock some things over. Let me go, because I don't feel like dealing with it. She's gonna knock all of the books over. And so she was doing this, and she was doing this yet, like in the timeline, right? So December 13th, she was doing this on the 12th, on 12-12, the 12-12 portal, the events have occurred, but not culminated until the lucky number 13. So I stopped her on the 12th because I didn't want her to knock everything over today. She got onto the bookshelf again and I thought about getting up and stopping her and then I thought, well, what if she has to knock something over? What if there's something on that shelf that I need to see? So I let her do whatever she needed to do and yay, she knocked a few things off of the shelf. And I have three of those things here, though you will only experience one of them today. She knocked four things down. Three things are relevant perhaps to it's three, but I just really, oh, I'm going to have to do it. Okay, but that's the last thing. Um, it's, it's not important right now. Um, this is important right now, and this thing. The fourth thing she knocked down was relevant to me. And I was just like, well, perhaps it's more to share with the collective. Maybe eventually. But I opened this book, and it was something that I had been using as a journal. And I opened it to a specific page, and I started reading, and I was out of sequence. And so I was just like, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about right here, but this seems very relevant. This seems relevant to something. And then I jumped back to the opposite page and looked at where I started writing and almost shit myself. And I immediately slammed the book shut and tossed it away because I was horrified. Because there is something that I started years ago that I was just like, this is completely stupid and I don't know why I'm doing it. Or rather, I do know why, but like, this is just silly and I should just give this up. And I did eventually end up, or like there was a process I would give it up, 
and then come back to it. Give it up, then come back to it. And then I just gave it up, for real. It happened one day kind of organically and I totally forgot about it until today. And now I'm quite upset because I don't know that what I'm talking about specifically on that page that I opened up to will happen or is happening. But what it alerts me to is that there are particular energies that will likely be coming in. For me, this is, this is like a personal manifestation. Though, you know, um, even if it's just the energy that comes in a different form, eventually it's going to become your manifestation. And it's kind of how manifestation works. So I'm a little bit shook is what I'm saying. But the things that I am to share with you now fairly regularly, this one I have to film today for some reason, because it has to be posted tomorrow for some reason. This, um, the, the three things that will be the most recent things that I share with you are scripts. These were scripts for like, shorter content, likely TikTok. Like I made a whole bunch, I used to have compilation videos on here of scripted stuff that I made for TikTok that I quite enjoyed, but it's just like, I don't know. Even when the writing or the script is authentic, like I feel like reading from a script still comes across false because it's not just coming extemporaneously, like from my heart through my throat and my mouth to you. You know, so when I start reading this to you, the energy is going to be different, but there is something relevant somehow, I don't know how, about these scripts that need to come out. This first one does not have a title, but what I will title it is Mental Manifestation is Garbage. And why you should stop. So let's get on with it. Today, my babies and Barbies, we're talking manifestation, magic, and more specifically, false ideas about in particular manifestation that will have you set back with garbage energetic consequences for years, perhaps decades, perhaps for the rest of your life. If you don't shake off these ideas, beliefs, egocentric brainwashing brainwashing, hypnotism, mentalism, mental magic. The universe is all mental. That idea and operating from it will have you imprisoned for as long as you invest in it. Will employing that idea stop you from intentionally manifesting? No. Almost nothing does. However, let's talk about the mind and its true use and power because we absolutely should not discard the mind, the intellect, but the idea that the mind controls all. That is false. And more than that, it is dangerous. Perception is incredibly powerful. What we think about ourselves and the world around us does dictate a lot of our behavior. If we believe we aren't powerful, if we think nothing works out for us, if we believe we're unloved, it's unlikely we will do much to manifest the lives we prefer, those that are authentic to us. Altering our minds, shifting our perception is an integral part of manifestation, but it is in fact not the only part and it is not in fact the most powerful part. If you manifest only from the mind or predominantly from the mind, you are first of all not even at half of your power and secondly, you are far more likely to manifest that which will cause your destruction. Why? Because the truth does not reside in the mind. The mind is of the air, 
Perception is not reality. It is an ephemeral and shifting thing. It is tricky, elusive, and it lies continuously to keep itself comfortable. Being a construct of the air, it would be ruled by that which rules the air. This would be the prince of the air or Satan. You were made alive when you were dead in transgressions and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience. We also all once lived among them in the lusts of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. That is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. The mind, as well as the material world, is an illusion. Materiality is not reality. The only thing that is real is the truth. Truth is not in the mind. Truth is not in the world. Therefore, if you are relying on your mind and what you see in materiality to guide you, you will remain lost and caught up. Here's an ugly truth. Mentalism, mental magic, only works on the weak-willed. You must first be asleep to be hypnotized. If you deal only with the mentally dead, you will continuously be bored, unfulfilled, unhappy, frustrated. Here's another ugly truth. What you manifest with the mind will be empty, and I don't care if the manifestation looks exactly as you pictured it. If it is empty, it is useless. If you believe the universe is all mental, it will be a cold world you create, an empty world, perhaps a pretty, admirable world for those who know no better, but you will know the lie that you live. It doesn't matter how many people look up to you when you are in fact a fraud, the worst sort of magician, the con artist, the lord of illusion, someone adept at rearranging the conditions of materiality to appear beautiful while they are in fact miserable. Mental magic is good at shifting scenery, but it cannot change the situation. You may be watching a different show, but you're on the same network. Rearrange materiality all you want that is not changing reality. To change reality, you must find and accept truth. Once you have accepted the truth, which is reality, you may then move through it. Truth is not in the mind. Truth is perceived by the mind, but it dwells in the heart. The heart is where reality, authenticity, resides. Without a deep understanding of what resides in your heart, your manifestations will tend to turn on you. They turn on you because what your manifestations, no matter how they appear, actually are, are the heart materialized. If there is undealt with reality in your heart, darkness, pain, trauma, you can visualize and shift the material all you want. It will be the same shit, the same situation. Over and over again until you deal with it. You may think you want one thing, but what you think isn't true. You think you want money, but you want safety, respect. You think you want a lover, but you want a mother. You think you want marriage, but you really want freedom. 
You think one thing, but the truth, the manifestation is something else entirely. And that gets real ugly when it shows up in material form. Another uncomfortable truth, most people manifest to escape reality, to hide the truth of who they are. These people will be forever imprisoned, no matter what wealth or status they manifest. Only the truth will set you free. Only authenticity allows for effortless and sustained manifestation. The mind is the control system, the structure, but the heart is the portal. It is the cauldron from which you create. If you never put your heart in it, what are you actually doing? Nothing. Without the involvement of the heart, you have dust and shadows. The energy, reality, passes through the aperture of the heart. You might want to know from what energy, what substrate from which you are creating before you create it. If you are manifesting from fear, hate, envy, that is what you are actually receiving when you manifest. It may look like $1 million, but all it is, is rage. Your manifestation is made out of and tends to amplify the original intent. The intent is the energy and the energy is in the heart. If your heart is absent from your creative process, all that you manage to make appear will be dead. Or it will be horrific because make no mistake, there are monsters in the heart. That's why people don't go there. They are scared of themselves. The mind is safer because there, we are completely in control of the illusions, the dream. But that will never satisfy you. Mental magic. The universe is all mental. This is for the faint of heart. The cowards. Those who cannot contend with reality and truth. It is weak magic and it is fake. Let it go. Or don't and keep chasing your own tail. Because magic, like life, is messy. And messy isn't wrong.